Welcome to Beside the Burn for Wednesday the 8th of June as we continue in chapter 2 of Philippians and today we're going to be looking at verses 9 to 24. On Sunday we were looking at how Paul gives us some examples in this letter of people who are following Jesus Christ and are being sanctified on a daily basis, that their salvation has been secured in a moment in time when they trusted in Jesus Christ, and now their salvation continues to grow through sanctification as they are made holy. And the example that we're going to be looking at today is that of Timothy. And Paul is uh, citing Timothy as an example of what salvation looks like in an individual who is prepared to live for Jesus Christ and prepared to share the grace and the love of Jesus in their daily lives. So let's read together Philippians 2 uh, verses 19 to 24. Paul says, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. So Paul is saying that Timothy um, is going to be sent uh, to the Philippians. He's going to send Timothy uh, to them. And if you realise that Timothy's name is at the beginning of the letter, so uh, the letter is coming from Paul and Timothy. The Philippians would have known about Timothy. He was with Paul whenever Paul uh, received the vision uh, of the man in the night calling him to go to Macedonia. And you can read about that in Acts uh, chapter 16 and then subsequently the first conversions of Lydia and the young girl and the jailer uh, in Philippi all contained in Acts chapter 16. So Paul or Timothy has been there right from the beginning and Paul now hopes in the Lord Jesus. So it's like us saying DV with our plans. If it is God's will in the Lord Jesus Paul's plan is to send Timothy. Paul doesn't presume that these things are going to happen. After all, throughout his ministry, uh, things have changed at the last moment. Disaster has struck. There have been problems and he's had to change his plans. So he would like to be able to send Timothy, but he's going to do it in the Lord Jesus. And therefore, if God has different plans for Timothy and for Paul, then that is what Paul will accept. And he's sending Timothy so that he can be cheered whenever he receives news about the Philippians. Timothy's going to go, he's going to meet with the church, may even be taking this letter to the church, and then he'll come back to Paul, who's in prison in Rome, and bring news of what's happening with the Philippians. And Paul loves this little church so much and he cares for the people there that he wants to be cheered by hearing what they're doing for Jesus Christ. And then Paul makes this confession about Timothy and it gives us a little insight into how the Holy Spirit is working in Timothy's life. He says, I have no one else like him. There's Paul in Rome. There's a strong church in Rome. He has many other people around him, but there is no one like Timothy. Timothy has a genuine concern for the welfare of the Philippians. He's not going trying to uh, push himself forward. He's not trying to make himself sound great. He's not carving out a path for himself. Instead, Timothy has a genuine concern for the Philippians and whenever he comes, he will show care and concern for them. For everyone looks out for their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. So here's the key difference in the way that Timothy lives his life. He is looking out for the interests, not of himself, but of Jesus. And that is a tremendous position to get in because many of the problems that we encounter is whenever people are looking out for their own interests, whenever people are trying to get things that please them and suit them rather than thinking about what Jesus would want in this particular situation. You remember the little bracelets that you used to get, uh, what would Jesus do? WWJD and the question was to be asked each step of the way what would Jesus do in this particular situation 
And Jesus is always looking for the needs of others. He's always looking for ways that others can be drawn in, that others can be reached with the good news. And this is obviously Timothy's plan that he would look out for the interests of Jesus Christ. So in any particular situation, he's not looking at how he can please the most people or how he can um, pander to their interests. He's thinking, well, the gospel here, what will help the gospel? What will promote the gospel? What will draw people to Jesus? And that is an important thing because often we can assume that it's our own interests that are the important thing rather than the gospel. And that's what it means to be a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, to think about what Jesus' interest is and then to live that out on a daily business. Verse 22, but you know that Timothy has proved himself because as a son with his father, he has served me in the work of the gospel. So Paul's saying, look, I'm going to send Timothy. He has a great interest in what will promote the gospel and the kingdom of God. And I know this because he's proven it to me on a daily basis. Like I was his father Timothy has been a devoted son to me. He served me and he has worked in the gospel. So for Timothy, the important things in life are Jesus Christ and the gospel. And as long as Timothy has those things at the forefront of his mind, having a mindset, an attitude like Jesus Christ, then everything else fits into place and you know where you stand with Timothy. You can trust him. He's not going to change his mind just to suit himself. He's always thinking of Jesus and the gospel. And Paul says, I hope therefore to send him as soon as I see how things go with me and I am confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon. So Paul's plan, God willing, is to send Timothy. He's going to wait and see how things go with himself. And then he'll send Timothy. But Paul is also confident at this stage that he himself will, will come to the Philippians as well. But it's all being planned in the Lord. It's all right having these great plans. It's all right putting these things in action. But it has to be in God's will and God's plan. And how often do we go on ahead and we plan things ourselves and we don't think about, is this truly God's will? Is this what God would want for me? And therefore, we need to take Paul's attitude here. In the plans that we make, we look to God and we say, God, is this your will? Is this what you want me to do? There may be something in your life today or this week that you have made great plans for and somehow it's maybe not working out the way that you had initially thought. Come to God and say, is this your will, God? Is this what you want? And then be prepared to accept, either if it is God's will or it isn't, be prepared to accept his decision and then stick by it. So let's come before God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for friends and for brothers and sisters in Christ who are like Timothy, who don't think of themselves, but instead think of you and your kingdom. And Lord, we praise you for them and we pray that we might be more like Timothy as well. Help us, Lord, also in our daily lives to accept your will, that we would make plans, Lord, but that we would bring them to you and ask, Lord, that either you would bless or you would stop them. And then, Lord, help us to accept your decision. Lord God, we praise you and we thank you this day. And we pray that we might accept your will for our lives. Amen. <laughs>